What's up, everyone? My name is Chris Marshall with my boy, Frank G. We are the hosts of Build the Empire podcast. Frank G, tell the people what we do. What's going on, everybody? Chris and I, we discuss established empires while showcasing us building ours. Frank G. What's up, my man? How you doing today? <clears throat> today, I am... I'm good. A little, a little overwhelmed with work, but I'm good. You know, we keep it moving. We said... Uh, we manage our time and we just get it done. Certainly so, a lot to do. I hear you. And I want to get into that. You know, I figured, you know, every couple of months, every couple of weeks for the listeners in the show, shout out friends. We give a, an inside the scoop of, I guess, our lives and, and what is going on personally with us. So you, you're flustered. You're overwhelmed. I mean, Tell the people exactly why. What's going on? What's going on in Frank G's mind? What's going on in Frank G's life? Frank G's life. Well, you know, we did just come back from a trip. And uh, partial partial of the trip, we uh, had problems. But the rest of the trip was excellent. And then we come back. You're I'm getting enough. back into my life. Let me, let me story tell my life. First of all, I was there. 100% you were, man. I'm glad you were. <laughs> I have my story as well. Um, yeah, you were that. <laughs> but I'm in a transitioning period right now at work. So I'm trying of a new position. So I'm trying to get the handle of it, trying to get IT to give me my damn laptop and pretty much the utensils to actually do my work. Um, Would you call them utensils or resources? I mean, I, it's, I guess, similar. Because when it, I hear utensils, I'm thinking a fork and a knife like a you getting ready to eat? Well, I got to do this work to eat. So then I guess it work. It makes sense. I understand. I understand. I wasn't judging. I was questioning. <laughs> I could see the question at hand. Uh, but yeah, you know, just things with a new role, taking on double the work. Well, you know what we call that? Expanding. A level up. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, you got to level up. Every lesson, every failure, every experience is a level up. You don't know when you're going to level up, though. It could be tomorrow, it could be in six months, could be in 18 months. But expect to level up. Yeah, you always got to keep uh, evolving, right? I mean, can't be, can't be content and can't be stationary. Complacent. I mean, we say often that complacency is almost like the devil. Uh, there's tons and tons of people who get complacent, whether you're working at a, a bank job and it's as a teller or, or just at like a Target or a Home Depot, whatever the fuck it is. Um, you know, people, which that's fine. You know, if you're cool with that lifestyle of, you know, just working Monday through Friday and then come in and having a couple of beers and watching the game and, you know, fading out, ain't nothing wrong with that. But you can't, do you have the right to kind of ask for more? Do you know what I'm saying? You can, well, that depends on what you're asking. And it, is it related to a salary increase? Are you doing more work? Are you performing at a rate that is helping the company tremendously? Then yes, you can ask for more. Yes, but we know the demographic which we're speaking of right now, which is majority of Americans who they don't develop the education to expand their mind, to add the skill set to have the value to request the pay increase or feel confident enough to even do so. They just feel somewhat entitled. Well, that, that is a, a mind, a, a mindset different. problem. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> um, so obviously with new things, new levels comes potential stress with new roles and whatnot. So I could see almost people being content and not moving to avoid those things. However, that is not, a good image in my head. So I will take on these new things and just, you know, I mean, obviously anything new you could suck at, right? So you, it just takes will time. You probably suck at it. Yeah. And even if you're good at it, you're nowhere near to the potential. Yeah. The, I mean, it takes time. It takes consistency experience. So, yeah, I mean, to those people who are content and it works for you, good for you. Uh, those people that want to level up and maybe you're experiencing some anxiety with a lot of increased roles just keep going, you know, set a time management table. Really, that's well, what I did today. <clears throat> that's probably the response to a lot of people. I mean, I'm currently seeing a girl right now who has anxiety to potentially go on interviews, whatever, right? And we've had that. 
Now mm -hmm. that's that's interesting because because how you know it's hard to play the game if you're in a, a game in your own head. Well, yeah, I mean, and now we're talking through problems of working out your own, your own uh, ability to deal with these things. That I guess resiliency. Well, I mean, it's the same as anyone who's complacent, who wants to level up, but feels that there's a block, right? I mean, it's ultimately why we have a platform or try to even build one to showcase our journey of building an empire. Yeah, I mean, I would say a lot of those people probably see um, failure, or they're they're. They're probably looking at an outcome, and if they aren't reaching it in their head or they can't reach it easily, they're, then it's causing more problems in their brain, and they're getting all jumbled up. So I could see that being a so problem. I love having goals. I don't like timetables on goals, and that's kind of counterintuitive with a lot of advice of people who speak about goals give. I just feel like if you put a timetable on a goal, you're, you, you're potentially – putting a failure date well yeah i mean it's good to have a deadline but you also need to be aware that that deadline can certainly change um i mean you have no idea if you're going to something new you don't know what's going to happen so you need to give yourself that space that time to ch you, you definitely need to pivot from that end goal potentially i mean you set a goal to read 10 books in a year and you get seven that's a win that's a win that's, that's a, a win, win. Yeah. yes so it's almost like you, you need to measure your goal in some uh, form or facet, like mathematically, right? But to put an end time limit of measurement, I feel like it's not necessarily a good thing. Yeah, no, because is there really an end? I mean, once you hit that point, <clears throat> there's always room to grow more. There's always something else you got to do to perfect what you your goal was. I mean, if it's as simple as cooking five meals, I mean, that probably should be set. But if you're learning a skill, I don't know if there's really a timetable. Huh. Yeah, I mean, before you know it, we're going to be in 2022. Um, we're going to have new goals. Reflect back on past year's goals. See where you progressed. See where you regressed. Pivot. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people don't even have the, um, like a process in which they would even think of random goals, such as cooking food or like learning how to play guitar there. It's just, I mean, these are like really out there obscure potential things that you just decided to do just to be slightly better. Yeah, I mean, I think like if this goes back to people being content with their current lives, <clears throat> um, I mean, playing guitar, learning how to cook, learning Spanish, um, it's all. How's that going? Tough as hell, man. I it, feel like you gave that up two months ago. No, nah, it's been. Uh, so I have an app that tells me how long it's been, and it has been 22 days since I've been on it. So a month. About, yeah, about. Um, so there's been seven months of the year. One month, you didn't. You got to hop on that, bro. You're, you're you're going to the city now. You're commuting, man. You should be playing that Rosetta Stone in your ears all day. Now, Rosetta Stone, I mean, it is an investment in yourself, but that shit is expensive. I believe it's around four hundred dollars, and it's also just someone speaking in your ear. It is very hard to learn anything like that. Yeah, if someone was like, "Computer, l compute." That's difficult to learn. I feel like that it's, would. It's not difficult to learn. It's difficult to memorize. So like you typically need someone to communicate back with you. Um, you need interaction. That's why the fastest way to learn is to just put yourself in the middle of a Spanish country for four months and you come back. That's your, that's your second language. You trying to uh, take the show abroad? Well, we did try and record an episode, not abroad, but somewhere in the States, and it didn't work out. New Orleans, that was terrible. We were partying. We were in a, we were in a loud bar, outdoor bar area, and we were legit. With our a, awkward friend, Tommy. <laughs> oh, man. We put a phone like five feet from us thinking we would get any content. I tell you, we sure got content. Um, 
whether it was consumed or not, you really have to dig on the internet to find that. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so we went to Miami. Miami was a, an interesting time. And then we, uh, we went from Miami to Atlanta. I tell you, that, that was a very interesting trip. Miami or Atlanta or all the above? All the above. Yeah, like I said earlier before you, you got mad at me for telling your story. Miami had its downs, and Atlanta had its ups. Now, I yeah, mean- so, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's like, how much do you enclose here, right? But at the same time, there's nothing to be ashamed and to be semi-transparent, which the transparency is that I was arrested for $20 worth of weed and was in jail, quote-unquote, pretty much prison for – about 24 hours getting deeper and deeper to the point where I had one phone call to call my good friend, Frank G here. (laughs) What a, what a moment that was when I hear the words, this is my last free phone call for the week for the entire week. And there was seven more days or, I mean, there was six days and like 18 hours left of the, of that seven day period. So the whole process was just absolute nuts. And The irony is, you know, we have a nice room, two bedroom, two bathroom suite. We had plans that night. Everything was set, ready in stone. And then boom, just like that, everything changed. Um, Mindset changed, physically, mentally changed, emotionally changed, financially changed, uh, experience just, you know, I I can't even explain what the fuck I went through On, on your side. It had to be pretty wild as well because i can't communicate with you for most of the day yeah i'm out here taking ubers back and forth to uh your location which trying is to, worthless yeah it's, i felt like i was a, a frantic mom in the moment trying to yeah. make sure trying to make sure my boy <clears throat> had money to call me and you know it's fitting if you're catching me on video right now because when the judge saw what I was in there for, she laughed and said, New York, it's legal. Why did you come down here? And then released me on zero, zero bonds in which they tried getting you and me to pay them 6,500 to get out of jail in which I shouldn't really be in there in the first place. I was just, I was set up in a crossfire. It was, it sucked. Yeah, that certainly was like a wrong place, wrong time, or just the wrong time kind of thing. And uh, it it shows you really have no idea what could happen. Um, You could prepare for a million things, and then that million and first thing is the thing that happens. So it's just like getting punched in the face, having a game plan, getting punched in the face, and then losing all sense of where you are. It's crazy because as crazy as that moment was, Outside of the first time that happened, which was pretty much similar, those have been the only crazy moments really in my life, which is kind of fortunate, right? Like, you know, no crazy car crashes, no, I haven't seen any deaths or anything. Like from a traumatizing standpoint, people are like, that is pretty horrific. It wasn't so bad, but it certainly was pretty bad. However, you can envision jail or a block on the Discovery Channel is pretty much what you get. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, Florida is certainly different than other places. Um, they seem to take it pretty, pretty serious in Miami, even if it's something super minor. Um, now, if I was the judge, I certainly would have been like, why'd you bring this guy here? What is wrong with you? Yeah, they wasted a day of my time, no sleep, no shower, did not eat their food. No poops. No poops. Meanwhile, we, you know, we checked into our room at like 4.30 and I was in jail by 8.30. We had the flight within two, two days to go to Atlanta. And we're sitting there like on our last phone call. Are we going to make this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was another thing. Are we, are we going to make our flight Saturday morning to Atlanta? So that was another part of like, okay, if this doesn't happen now, we need a plan. So we need to make sure. Which is why good. you were my last call. And I can only imagine 
your thought process on my thought process on how the next four days essentially would play out. You would imagine you go through that type of experience, really where you want to be is home in your bed, in your safe spot, in your room, in your shower, taking your shit on your toilet bowl, you know, to, I guess, catch a flight to, you know, have fun and celebrate yourself when you just essentially lost three, 4,000 on nothing and bullshit. Very interesting. We made it happen. Well, the, yeah. So, I mean, so that was a thought, obviously. They're certainly, okay, can we can we bounce back from this? Can we still have a good time? Because what, what is done is done. Um, Ain't nothing you can do about it. Ultimately, what is done is done. And now you have this rest of your vacation paid for and planned. Can we go and do this? Or is my boy not going to be able to mentally recuperate and are we going to have to catch a flight home? I mean... I may have still been on my, my path. And that's funny. I would have dipped. You would have been like, all right, I'm going to Atlanta. I'll see, I'll see you in a few days. I don't but know I, how that would work with the hotel of my name, but I could see, I would have to muster that one up for my boy. <laughs> but uh, I mean, some, some told me that, I guess maybe you told me, <laughs> but some told me, <laughs> some told me that we were going to continue on and still have, you know, the enjoyment out of this trip <coughs> and the story, certainly. Uh, a story. And um, yeah, I sure made sure I was on my P's and Q's in the ATL. And um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny because before we have these type trips, we talk about, you know, our mushy rules and moments and memories and uh, just wondering what the memory is going to be before we go and then like how it's going to be afterwards. And then it finally happens and you can look at the before, middle and end here and you're just like, holy shit, what fucking lessons did I learn there? Well, what lessons did you learn? Don't buy weed from a stranger in the middle of Miami. (laughs) But like that guy, man, in all fairness, he did give me it where I was like, I don't want this. You're a good salesman for having me to take this. It was like a, a strange situation in which we never really wanted to be a part of it. Yeah, that's that's all wrong place, wrong time kind of thing. I mean Yeah. Um man, that was annoying. The people in Miami who residents of Miami do say they nowadays, man, they avoid that area. They it's it's gone to, to shit. To be honest, they've said. And we are talking about South Beach. So Ocean Drive, Collins Ave, um, it, it really is not the best area. Um, you know, I used to always feel, felt like Miami was my adopted second city. I tell you, you spend some time in Miami-Dade County jail. You don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so... You know, I I obviously told you this, and this is what I found um, fascinating uh, while I was on the block, in the block. Doing time. Doing time is, you know, obviously there's people with you and like you have your yard time and like you could be chilling in the yard and, you know, everyone, I guess, is not fearful. Your boy is, he's not not fearful, but he's yours on your you got to be aware. You have to be uh, yeah. aware of all of your surroundings. Everything. But, you know, I'm essentially with a bunch of drug dealers because that's what I, that's uh, what I got in for, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, weed is a quote-unquote drug charge. Yeah. So I did at one point insert myself in a conversation to have a voice and actually communicate with these individuals because I can see the divide between, you know, correction officer police and these inmates and i i can it's it's so unfair and um, like nobody cares it's just a system it really it really is and i was trying to tell these guys now mind you i'm i'm really the only caucasian right Mm -hmm. and these guys have similar traits that we do they're hustlers right but like they know how to make money they know how to sell they can read people's reactions body language like I was trying to tell them and I'm like now forming a crowd. People are like giving me their ears and I'm like, why can't you take this energy and sell insurance, sell houses, sell cars, sell, you know, anything you can 
legally make money. We do it by selling shit. What I, I know it's different, but they don't to say they uh, it's that's objective, but people don't understand that it's it's that simple in a way. Yeah, I mean it so I, I think uh, at least one of the differences would be potentially where where someone's upbringing and where they came from and how they think, but also now, if you're working selling for a company, it's not untaxed money. I mean, you, you're on the streets pushing something. Of course, and this it's way harder than money. just chilling, man. But they have. I mean, I know for a fact the hustle has the skills, and the hustle will always find a way to make money. But you certainly cannot make money in jail. I needed you to fucking put a dollar in my phone card so I can make a, a phone call. Yeah, man, I was trying to make sure you were able to get some like uh, Twinkies or some some M and M's. Like, my, I had, I did not see one piece of toilet paper in the whole place. My boy I, said that they were bologna fungus sandwiches. Like, I'm like, I gotta make sure you can eat something. Like, I I did not see any food except for the prison food they gave me before they released me, which was dinner. And I ain't gonna lie, I ate it just to say I ate jail food, but I sure wasn't happy about it. <laughs> I mean, I I could get that. I could get that. The way you described the food, it sounded treacherous. It, sounded... it wasn't so bad. In fact, I think it, it would probably make you rip nutritionally. It was just fine, I suppose. You just got to get in your dips, which people would really get in those dips. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. Yeah, some people get brolic in jail. I just really never, I never understood the people who get like fat in jail. Well, I guess, you, I guess you had. Well, I guess they have maintained their weight somehow. I guess they don't do the exercise and dips. They don't do the push-ups, and then they eat the snacks because the food's trash. I don't know. I didn't necessarily see a snack room. Well, that's because you were in the beginning process. You yeah, weren't... yeah, I'm sure there was more. I mean, I saw the little TV room. I saw the ba- I saw the basketball court with no basketball. I saw, uh, I saw everything. I guess the little cafeteria room. It was. I tell you, if there's one thing that I could fix within this system. Just one thing that's like probable. It's like, make the bathrooms decent. Well, that's, so other than the showers, the bathroom is like one of the most common areas for like a a stabbing or like jumping to happen. So like you probably, you probably, yeah, there's no cameras. So you probably want, that to not be that nice so you spend the least amount of time in there but also it's pretty inhumane that's that's what it that's what it was i mean the whole the whole thing is inhumane and you're out here you know thinking you know what you what i do everything i do and you know shit i generate and the passions and the goals it it was just it was just a bizarre place to be in to think that if i had the shit which right before my release i finally took my shit and they were like waiting on me. They're like, "Where's Chris Marshall? We're leaving." He's like, "Oh, you taking the shit in the back?" We're fucking cop is knocking at the door. Imagine they left without you. <laughs> they weren't leaving without. Me. <laughs> um, Wasn't letting like, that happen. In your cell, like there was no toilet paper. So if I had to shit, realistically, I would have had to like use water from the sink and wipe it with my hand and like. Was like, there it, soap? There was, bro. It there was soap as if you used it for a hundred days and you had that piece of soap. Oh, uh, it was a bar or like watered down, like from a, like it a was bottle. a bar, but it was like, Ugh, it's, that's it disgusting, was, it, bro. Cause that bar has accumulated disgusting amount of like nasty shit. Bro. I couldn't even. And the irony is you're doing your thing, probably nervous and curious about your boy. At least you were in a nice ass suite. I was in a nice suite. Um, I mean, I, I I walked on the beach, clear my head, smoke a cigar, <laughs> trying to, I mean, what can you do but wait for a phone call? So, you know, I get a couple of them. I think maybe it was three. And then the last one was like, well, these ain't coming no more. <laughs> they were not coming no more. But ultimately, we knew it was either you're out that day or... You're three out or four days later. three or four days later. So three or four days later would have messed up the trip. We wouldn't have been able well, to go w- to Atlanta. It, it wouldn't have because I would have paid the 6,500 to get out that day. Would you pay 6,500 to get out three days earlier in that, in that environment? 
four days earlier. Of I mean, course. <laughs> yeah, that's what it I said, was thinking. You, you said you couldn't take a shit. You can't not take a shit for four days, five days now. <laughs> Actually, you, I mean, I couldn't wait the last minute I went. <laughs> so, second he smelled freedom, his butthole fucking <laughs> opened up. <laughs> <laughs> you smell that you whiff that man i mean i bet i could imagine your celly just being like bro you really gonna take a shit right here next to me i i mean that's probably common i got lucky it has to be my celly uh he was released as soon he bonds himself out as soon as he got in so i didn't have a cellmate but if i stayed for like another day or two they probably would have just brought one in it, it's chris is it john marcus <laughs> I was certainly on the way to get get you some money, though. Certainly on the way to get you out of there. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I mean, six thousand five hundred dollars just to just to dip out of an environment. Uh, so, if you wonder how much freedom is worth, certainly six thousand five hundred. Yeah, at least. <laughs> yeah. It, now, because there was no question, I was like, run. I was gonna run to the bank. But if now if it was sixty five thousand, that's different. I mean, now you're talking about some serious shit. But like, I, I don't even I don't even have that in one account. Where like, I mean, I don't even have a credit limit. I was just gonna say that. that I was just gonna say I, don't, I can't even put it on a credit card. Yeah, my credit limit. I have two credit cards. My credit limit between them both, one is like thirty eight thousand, I believe, and the other is like maybe like twelve. But with that being said, at any given time, you can essentially call up your credit card company and ask for an increase, and you are more than likely going to get it. Yeah, as long as your credit isn't in the gutter. Yeah, but what's gutter credit? I would say gutter credit is like below 640. I was going to say 5600. Now, that's, now, when I say gutter, that, that's not gutter. Gutter is probably like 450. That's, no, 550 is gutter, kid. But you could come back easily, I think. Or not maybe not easily, but there's a plan that isn't like long term 550. 400 is like, ooh, you're halfway from an excellent credit score. Well, what is a credit score? What's an excellent credit that, score? Well, X, I think excellent is 780. You got real technical. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm hanging around 800 and I'm like pissed I can't get to. 802 nah nah they i mean 850 is max and you hardly get there you you need more debt ironically to increase your credit yeah be like past 800 my credit hovers around 790 like four ish i've never hit eight i don't believe um and i again i think the reason why you've hit eight if you have hit eight is I because hit, yeah. you you I have for a, a day. Car longer, I think. Like I've I've hit I've hit an eight hundred for like one period, and then the next period oh. it changed, and then it drops to like seven ninety eight, and it's like, well, that's like common though, you know. Anytime you open a new card, anytime you get a new car, anytime you pretty much are putting debt on your credit, it will decrease. Or anytime you're opening something, yeah. Ultimately, um, to for you to pay it back and show them, I guess, that you are able to pay. So, you know, we're going to end the show here shortly, but I have two grand worth of money from my credit card in which I've had, let's say, three years or so, which means I've made, let's say, $600 a year from a credit card, like from it. I don't know how people don't understand how to do these simple things. I don't know. Well, All that- you got to do is spend money you have. Yeah, well, that's the thing. People spend money they don't have. So that's some people are against credit. Well, credit is important, obviously, but uh, some people are scared of it. I guess they don't trust themselves. No, I don't. Well, they don't trust the system. Let me tell you, the system to me, I've somehow seemed to have a benefit from it. Well, that is exactly why I think it could have been episode like 10 that we made how to, how to use, get a free vacation. Yeah, how to utilize your credit cards in yeah. your favor. Yep. So, I mean, you certainly you certainly can get benefits from it now. We're passed I, out on the plane. 
and they're pitching the credit card and we wake up it's like oh that's a good deal Should we, yeah, yeah, we, we did think about it we have two pamphlets <laughs> two pamphlets for a new airline Mario i did Kart. take it i tell you when i came back and I had all those charges and fees and threw that out. right out threw that right out <laughs> fuck out of here i don't want to see this yeah, i don't I'm want not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> certainly not back to miami yet oh uh, man i don't know i tell you because I potentially made 10 grand as soon as I got back and walked in this door by busting my ass. Every person I call, I'm not leaving until they buy something. And if I made 10 grand, I mean, that still sucks what happened the month prior, but cool that like this was able to, to happen. But uh, I was thinking about maybe going to Tampa because like you just got nothing to do the last week. Yeah, well, I'll be in Orlando soon. You know, I don't know if we'll extend that trip and hit up uh, some Disney rides, some Epcot drink when around the world. In Orlando, exactly. I'll be in Orlando August 8th through the oh, 10th. That's August. Yeah, yeah, August 8th through the yeah. 10th for work. No, that's a new month. You know, I don't know how I'll be doing that much. I just, any days in August, I'd have to request very shortly. So I would like to know if I have to request any days as you turn 30 years old. Yeah. For everyone listening, my boy here, Chris, is waiting for me to make the the big three old birthday plans. Set them I tell stone. you, I was just on birthday plans for a thirtieth birthday. I was chilling, a nice week in New York. It was a good time, man. I hope I hope your birthday is similar. It's certainly not going to be as intimate, but it will. It it should be a good time. Hey, hey, hey! Don't give out my business, but she would say that it's not intimate, fully. So I don't know. I don't know. Well. Now you're giving more business out than I am. I, I'm, I, I'm putting you in a, in a I was, trap. I'm, I'll, I'll be able to speak freely. Fucking speak freely. Then. That's a free platform. <laughs> two, That's when you had two people together is an intimate vacation, technically, as opposed to seven Me people. Me and you at, go away all the time, baby. We eat chicken together. Yeah. It is, a non, it is technically more intimate than seven people going away. You're, you're one of my best friends. and we. Oh, go, in that sense? Yeah, all right. That's a good that's a good point that you made, non gaily. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I was gonna say non gaily, but I figured I didn't even have to. <laughs> well, you didn't make your point though without saying it by saying it is more intimate than seven people going. It's like <laughs> well, well yeah. played, sir. Yeah, one on one, man. Uh, yeah. I mean <laughs> you were my last phone call, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I had to be, right? And then you took me out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean <laughs> I there's no way like I had to bounce my boy back. And I know he didn't even want that dinner paid for, but obviously <clears throat> it's just something, you know, you don't want, you got to make sure someone's having a good damn time. I hear you, kid. That was a great dinner though. Let me tell you. I was stuffed. I, I, I still think about that food. Yeah, that was a great spot. We, we, we still managed to eat good in Miami. Yeah. You got to make do. You got to make do with what you got um, and just keep on keeping on, as Joe Dirt would say. Keep on keeping. Yeah. You know, <laughs> life's a garden. Dig it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's done is done, right? Yeah. Um, so tomorrow we have a uh, an interview, which will come out the following Monday. Um, if all goes well, it should be with a Disney exec, I believe, who's writing the book. So uh, next show should be a little more formal, educational, uh, certainly interesting uh, as we grow and pursue and uh, build an empire. Uh, Frank G, you got last words? Well, thank you guys for checking out another Inside Your Empire or Our Empire episode. And like we said in the beginning, man, you can have a plan, you can have an idea of what's going to happen, but realistically, you need a plan B and the ability to pivot. Thank you. Rocking with the best. Peace and love. We'll catch you next week.